But the title that I came up with and that captured, I thought, an important aspect of Franklin Roosevelt's presidents was command performance. And I was going to spin out the various ways you could interpret command performance. But the emphasis, well, was both on the command and the performance. And the command was kind of a dual use, where he was the commander of American forces during the Second World War. And so that's where the command comes from. But a command performance, as you may know or remember, is usually a performance given by some artist or actor or musician before a king or queen. And typically the invitation comes and the king commands to you, you to perform at court at such and such a time. So I could argue that Roosevelt's command came from the American people. And this is something that presidents have commented on and prided themselves on since the days of Andrew Jackson. They serve at the will of the American people. And reluctant candidates, reluctant presidents, like Jackson, like Ulysses Grant, this was particularly true of generals who go into politics. Jackson, Grant, uh, as late as Dwight Eisenhower. Dwight Eisenhower didn't want to run for president, but the idea that the American people might command him to be president he would say, well, it's very much the way I answered orders from my commander-in-chief during the war. And the higher commander-in-chief, in fact, than the President of the United States, is the people of the United States. So that's where the command was going to come in. The emphasis was equally on performance. Because I came to realize that the success of presidents is very much a performance. Presidents perform a role. There are certain things that are expected of presidents, and if you do these things well, then you're pretty far down the road to getting what you want out of the presidency and getting the kind of support you want. Now, this is not to say that a president's performance is insincere, but it is to say that it must be effective and it must be viewed, at least in part, as a performance. And when I thought about this, I was drawn by a comment that Franklin Roosevelt made to Orson Welles. Orson Welles was probably the most famous actor of his day in the 1930s. He was a movie director and producer. He was a really big wig in Hollywood. And he visited the White House one day during the 1930s. And Franklin Roosevelt said, Orson, I want you to know that you and I are the two finest actors in America. And I thought this was quite striking, strikingly candid, coming from a president. Because I think all presidents understand that they're acting in some sense or another, but for them to admit it to another actor, maybe he would only admit it to another actor, I'm not sure. He didn't repeat the comment, as far as I know, to other people. But he did recognize that what he was doing was an aspect of performing. It was a kind of act. Now, when I'm writing this book about Franklin Roosevelt, I have to explain Roosevelt the president. I also have to explain Roosevelt the man. This is a biography. This is a life of Franklin Roosevelt. And this notion that he was acting seemed to me to provide a kind of insight as well into the, the individual, into the personality. Because I remember an interview I heard on the radio years ago this was probably 20 years ago. And I remember the comment. It was, I think it was an interview. Actually, it may, excuse me, it may have been on television. Because I think the interviewer was Dick Cavett. And I believe that the interviewee, I'm, I've searched for this on Google and various other places. I can't find it. I'm pretty, I know I'm not making it up. But I may have misremembered exactly who the actor was. But I think it was the Broadway actor and movie actor Joel Gray. And the interviewer, Cabot, asked Joel Gray if after all these years he had spent on stage, on screen, if he ever suffered from stage fright. And Joel Gray said, no, not stage fright. What I have is life fright. And what he explained, what he went on to explain was that he found acting to be so congenial because when he was on stage, when he was filling a role, 
He could get outside of himself. It was sort of the self of himself that he was afraid of. When he had to be himself, that's what made him nervous. When he could be somebody else, then he could be sort of anybody else. And anybody else was preferable to himself. So there were things in his own head, in his own psyche, that he was uncomfortable with. And he found the greatest comfort in getting outside of that. And I've, I've thought about that for a long time. When I've observed people who are in positions where they're performing. And when I came across Franklin Roosevelt's comment to Orson Welles, I remembered this interview and this remark that this veteran actor had made. They know it's not stage fright, it's life fright. And the more I got to think about it, the more I came to the conclusion that the way to understand Franklin Roosevelt and when you're writing a biography, you're trying to figure out what the key to the life is, the secret to understanding this particular individual. And maybe it's not insignificant. How many of you remember the movie Citizen Kane? It's Orson Welles' most famous movie. And if you remember the way the story goes, Citizen Kane, who's modeled on William Randolph Hearst, has died. And a reporter goes out and tries to figure out what the secret of this life was. Because here's this kid who was born to a very wealthy family, and he, he had to make his own mark in the world. And he became this publisher, he became a Hollywood producer, he spent money lavishly, he had numerous affairs. He was somebody who was sort of thrashing around in life, trying to figure out what it was all about. And this reporter, after the death, is trying to, you know, what made this guy tick? And he heard that the last word that he spoke before dying was rosebud. And so this good reporter is trying to figure out what's rosebud. He figures that rosebud must hold the secret to the life of this very wealthy individual who seemed to have everything except happiness. And so he goes back through his life, and it's through the eyes of the reporter that we see this life unfold. And so we see the various phases of Kane's life, William Randolph Hearst's life. And the reporter goes through the whole life, and he's trying to interview people, and he's trying to find the story, trying to find the secret, trying to figure out what Rosebud meant. If anything, he's not sure that it really holds the key, but, but he thinks that it does. And so we get to the end of the life, and we get to the end of the movie, and the reporter is stumped. And he just can't figure out what Rosebud was. So the last scene of the movie, the reporter's walking away, and the, the great mansion, which is supposed to be San Simeon in California, they're cleaning out all of the stuff, and the moving guys have come in, and they're throwing away a lot of stuff, and giving it off to charity, and doing everything, sort of dismantling the life. And the last scene of the movie, there's this big pile of trash that's being burned. And the camera scopes in. And in the middle of this pile of trash, just as the flames are licking up, is this childhood sled, this toy. And the brand name on the sled is Rosebud. So anyway, when I'm writing a biography, when I buy any biography is writing a biography, we're all looking for the key to understand the life. We're looking for rosebud and what it means. Now, you can't explain a whole life through a word, a rosebud, or a single key, but I think, at least I've concluded, that it simply comes with the territory of reducing a life to a book. That you know, a life takes 60, 70, 80 years to live. If I'm writing a book, it might be a long book, it could be as long as 800 pages, and it might take you 20 hours to read, but 20 hours compared to 80 years. So you take this life and you boil it down. And you try to find something that explains the life. So I concluded that the way to explain the life of Franklin Roosevelt was that he, like Joel Gray, suffered from a kind of life fright. And that he was more comfortable on stage in this role 
than he was as an individual. Now, why did I come to this conclusion? In part because he was so good at it. Franklin Roosevelt, I think, was the best performer as president of all the presidents of the 20th century. 